So here is the CGX mount out of the box. Isn't that right, Cassie Dog? And one thing to note, I've seen them in other videos use these handles here and uh, to grab hold of it. And then there's a handle down here. And there's a very good reason for that. That is a heavy mount. It is a beast. It is definitely a step up in the game. If, if you have an advanced go-to or a, a CGM2, something along that line, this is a beefier piece of hardware. Um, this is metal, metal. Got a little plastic there. This, this is a plastic shield, but this body is, is tough, tough metal. Um, you have metal here that's been fluted some, or, or uh, they've got the carve outs here for engineering space uh, uh, weight savings. Um, and I think that they did that because they had to, because it is heavy. Um, you've got your, your uh, power cord and your inputs here. And then around here, you've got your auto guide port and PC connector. My understanding is the PC connector is only good so far with the specialty software from Celestron and uh, Plane Wave, I think it is. Um, it doesn't work with uh, some of the other um, programs. If you're going to use ASCOM, you have to connect to the hand controller. Let's take a look at that as well. The hand controller should have a USB mini port on the bottom. That's new. Yeah, so you have a USB mini port there if you're gonna connect uh, an ASCOM style driver. And of course you have your beautiful Nexstar Next hand controller. It's uh, this Celestron does have, for my money, the best user interface. Um, their user interface is very friendly and intuitive. They've cut out a lot of the unnecessary steps in their menus and it gets you right to it. Um, the alignment is very easy. Um, so that's that's a, a big benefit in my mind. So it looks like you're gonna have to have the hand controller plugged in all the time, um, and you'll just have uh, the USB pass through the hand controller into the box. It would be ideal to not have to have the hand controller in the observatory. Uh, it would just be one thing to eliminate. If I could just run a USB straight off of that, um, to a hub and run everything off of that that would be much cleaner, but oh well, it's not that big of a deal um, Here's the it's got a bubble level. Yay. It's got knobs here um, Oh, here we go. This knob is your latitude adjust So what's neat is oh wow, that is so easy. This is a very beefy mount, but look at how easily I'm able to change the uh, the angle it is so simple you can see it moves just a little bit each time. I'll try and hold it steady so you can see. It's not that much, but I mean, you can really see it going. Look, at, uh, this way is, is a little bit easier because it's dropping it. But the weight of it is so simple. It's on this worm gear or worm uh, screw down here. And you can see inside it's got a little lever. As you, uh, as you turn that gear, you've got it going here. It just pushes up on this lever arm inside there and pushes on that and it, uh, it raises or lowers your latitude. That is so simple. Um, it's it's a whole lot easier doing it with that uh, than the old way. So here is your latitude marks. Um, okay, okay, there. I guess that's your indicator. So right now you're looking at 35 degrees. Uh, no, it's closer to 40. So yeah, it just depends on the angle. You really have to look at it right. Let's see if we can get it to focus there. So that's, yeah, 37 degrees right now. We're in Oklahoma, so it's pretty close, actually, to where we want it to be. Um, you will notice that the arrow is down right here. When it comes to you, it's turned around backwards so that it can fit into the, the molding. So just so it'll fit in this box in the neatest way possible, they do turn it around. So one thing you have to remember is, is let go of the clutch here. Let's see, is that it? Boom. Okay, and you, I think you can see why if you, if you turn it this way, you see how this part is kind of exposed up here at the top, and that's the part where the, where the motors are. When you turn it around this way, and there is, 
that's a mechanical hard stop right there. So that's as far as it's going to go. And you can imagine if the optical tube is here and pointing down, that's as far as you want it to go. Um, so then it comes around here. Let's try this other direction. And it stops there. So you've got to stop. You've got to stop at here and a stop here. Those are mechanical. You can feel them. They, it will not go farther. And that's part of the internal wiring in the cord wrap. So it kind of, I mean, you're going to have the telescope tube on there balanced anyway. Um, but you can see where it kind of, when they ship it, they protected it by, by putting it in that configuration. Nice of them to put the air on there to avoid that confusion. Now let's see about this guy. I'm going to loosen this up. Whoa. Okay. So it is significantly, it really wants to go. But again, okay, there it's kind of barking on the, uh, on that. Let's try, turn it up here, clutch on, let's put this where it should be, and then clutch on, and let go of the clutch this way. So there, okay, that's a mechanical hard stop there. So that's as far as it'll go one way. Let's try the other way. That's it on the other way. So you've got from there to there. So when they say it'll skew, it'll skew 20 degrees past the horizon, or past the zenith, this is why it's mechanically looks like it's limited to that. I mean, you can see where that would be zenith and that's it. That's all you got. So that's interesting. Huh. So really, the, the, it's only going to move this much. You're never going to wrap around at all. And then it's only going to move, um, like we showed earlier, pointing down to pointing down. So you're limited to one less than one complete turn in both axes. You're not, you're not ever going to have it spin and spin and spin and spin. It's going to go halfway around to halfway around, and then the top will go almost a full circle. So uh, there's your limits. It's a, it's quite a beast, and mechanically, I can tell the the pla the plastic is very. It's, it doesn't feel too wimpy. It's it's very, very tough plastic. It's like handgun plastic. It's uh, that tough of a, of a, of a good, strong plastic. Um, this is, this feels like very well done metal. We've got metal aluminum here. Um, yeah, and there's no polar scope on these models. This is a cover. It does not cover a polar scope. If you get a polar scope, you have to buy an additional one that comes off the side and aims up. Um, you can't see through the center of this. They've they've used up that internal space for the uh, the wiring. So there is no there's no polar scope down here, boys. All right. So not too bad though. Very very simple uh, to adjust here. When we get the uh, azimuth bolts on. Let's see where those are going to go. Here you go. The azimuth bolts will go there to uh, to adjust on the tripod. And then, of course, the little party trick under here. Hey, there's your uh, Allen wrench that's built into the to the mount. Nice little surprise feature. I like that. I hope that they were smart enough to make every Allen that's on this thing this size so you only need the one. But, uh, all right, so there's your CGX mount out of the box.